My background is quite an eclectic mix. So expect the unexpected. This is the NTM, the uh, capital of Laos. Stand back detached from the situation and say, what's actually going on here? The group's exposure to developing markets continues to increase. I consider myself incredibly lucky to have been able to travel all over the world, both with work and socially. This special place is Albania and Tirana, its wonderful capital. There's four of us and we're in a taxi and we're in the Azerbaijani capital of Baku. I've seen many individuals and teams perform well and many others perform not so well. We give him his money, we give him a really good tip because he got us there on time. But the flip side of the coin is we'd never use that guy again, <laughs> right? The way we get better as organisations is just sharing our ideas and sharing our thoughts. And mine's based on, on my experience. And these are the questions you're asking. Has he got operations all over the place? And do you, have, do you need sight of the operations? Or are you just a consolidations machine? 30 year international career in which I've been involved in turnarounds and troubleshooting. That was a bit of a blow. Over 50 acquisitions. I think we, we need to make a decision as an entrepreneur. We need to decide, are we building a tent for us and our family, or are we building real estate that we can move on later on? And that, that decision shapes the context in which we operate and the decisions we make thereafter. I had a couple of personal entrepreneurial ventures that were quite challenging. I don't think I can reach from here. <laughs> no, no, do it more gentle. <laughs> If we don't try, we'll never know. Okay, stop now. That doesn't help, does it? No. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I've also uh, held senior and board roles within listed groups. Good morning, everybody. Including for 40% of my career, one role with an organisation that grew from uh, $70 million turnover in a single country with 100 employees. It's amazing how the world shifted to over $6 billion turnover over 80 countries and over eight and a half thousand employees. <clears throat> Far away. And in all of this, I've been lucky enough to be involved in, on the ground, over 150 operating companies. I'd like to know what your wife was doing. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Our cash cows are getting a little bit tired now, and perhaps we've got to think about a new way. You know, we, we've all got different ways of running our businesses, our organisations. The worst businesses are always the ones that are always in meetings. The meetings are information share when the information could be easily shared another way. They've got too many attendees. Some of the folks who should be there aren't there. Only 15% of the global workforce, only 15% are highly involved in and enthusiastic about their work or workplace. Only 15%. What happens when our people aren't operating at level two endeavor is we get this type of stuff. This is in a five star hotel. 85% are at best just going through the motions or at worst they're actually working against their companies. They get to the point where they think, well, I'm not staying here again unless I really have to. Outperformance is all about performing better. Better than before, better than others, better than expectations. If they can't be bothered, I can't even be bothered. Outperformance is all about people. the most successful teams and individuals shape what they do by designing an environment, sometimes subconsciously, that actually covers four bases really well. Putting sense and shape and semblance to, uh, to all of those learnings. I put this together in a model I call PPMC Leadership, People, Principles, Mechanics and Culture. It's a part of an overall framework called the natural cycle of team success that I think operates. That's what great leadership is. It's about finding ways to get people to really pour their heart and soul into a project. And if they pour their heart and soul into the project, guess what? We're gonna achieve what we want to achieve as leaders. We can use this tool not only to think about our company, but also to think about our department. We don't have to be leading a business. We might just be leading a department. It might just be a small team. So, if I've got this right, he's a very experienced business guy with a dodgy sense of humour who sees life as a journey to be warmly embraced, that does keynotes, talks and masterclasses for entrepreneurs and leaders. He does CXO one-on-one -on -one sounding boards too. He also mentions something about PPMC leadership. There's a tendency for us as CFOs 
um, because we're sort of quite left brain hardwired, often very logic brains, there's a ten there can be a tendency to be perfectionist in our outlook. And being a perfectionist, once we've got people into pouring their heart and soul in, and then we push them, push them, push them even harder, I've been guilty of this, um, we can turn them in, turn them the other way. This is Wales in spring. I've followed team sports all my life. A lot of the smaller nations are fantastic in this tournament. And I've often been struck by just how difficult top quality sports people find it to play out of position. I've done extensive research to complement uh, my experience. In business, many of the people I encounter are clearly playing out of position for them. When I trained as an accountant, I spent my entire career trying to get out of accounting. <laughs> Lifting yourself to a new place for you takes both work and time. So long as whatever we do is a conscious choice, then we're going to find ourselves in good shape. If you drift in your career, then I think you need to get into one of the other three modes. And the other three modes are you're ambitious and you have a really clear idea what you want to do. And if you have a really clear idea of what you want to do, just get on with it. Just take baby steps. You make the move, then the next thing appears. You make the move, the next thing appears. Quite often taking steps is quite daunting. Just take some steps. And it's amazing. You take one step, another door opens. Take another step, another door opens. The next group of people are ambitious. They don't quite know what they want to do. Well, take a few picks in areas that you find interesting. And just get some experience. Just try a few things. Because eventually you'll narrow down and really find yourself playing in the position for you. If it's in an area that you're interested in, go test it, go try it out, see what you enjoy, see what you don't enjoy. Oh. The third group of people are the folks who consciously choose, like my wife, to what my wife calls poopling. Poop along. I haven't really got any ambition. I just want to, you know, just want to enjoy my life and just do regular things and you know, as long as I've got enough money to pay the bills, I don't mind. Provides that conscious choice, that's a great thing to do. We all need to do what's in our heart, what we want to do, it makes us happy. Our mindset is really important. So he pulls out and he's now driving the wrong way. And selling to business leaders is as much knowing about our own organisation as it is knowing about theirs. And guess what? This car starts coming towards us at quite a rate. We've got to really understand our own internal processes and how we go about implementing the solutions or service experiences that we are developing and selling. We're absolutely terrified. Give them a balanced view. And the driver just calmly hooks up on a pavement and he starts driving on the pavement past all these store clothing stalls and food stalls. And then we get to the top of the road, which is pretty much our destination on time. Via those stories, maybe even talking about how we dealt with bumps along the way. When we're selling, it's not just about delivering what our customer in theory wants. It's also about the way that we go about it. Would you rather have been sat in traffic and got there late? I love the title that you've given us. <laughs> it's from Bosnian bus rides to escaping a cul-de-sac, how to thrive in our digital age. Doing something different and truly unique is usually well worthwhile. Empty my brain of all my experiences and try to sort of make shape and sense of, of kind of what I've seen. It's a blend, really, of thought-provoking pictures and stories. This is right at the niche end of niche. The experiences from a business career, lessons that I've learned. In this new world, we need to be a tiny bit more people-focused. The format that hopefully people can relate to and engage with. There's no point in having a corporate event if it's not actually delivering value for the attendees. <laughs> it's got to create some kind of transformation. OK, so now it looks like he does keynotes, talks and masterclasses for CFOs as well as entrepreneurs and leaders. He cares about people and improving businesses and uses stories, visuals and frameworks to unlock new mindsets. 
but I'm still not clear on PPMC leadership. I haven't thought through this. That's the super... <laughs> the better performers have a greater proportion of quality people. This mix is going to very quickly change. So there's going to be a very quickly a greater proportion of folks who are digitally savvy. When I talk about people, it's all about quality people and what I call bridge builders. In troubled businesses, the gems are either ignored, underutilised or overworked. And the top two in the company can actually get on and work together. Often in, in, in large organisations, there's a CEO and CFO sometimes because the CFO wants the CEO's job. <laughs> You're not supposed to laugh at this. <laughs> Absolute clarity around principles, they might not be documented. The mission, the vision, the strategy. Your mission, your mission, the purpose, and the desired behaviours and mindsets. What type of culture do we want? The desired culture. The operating mechanics make it more of a joy to operate within and around the company. If we've got our people and we've got our principles, how do we bring the whole thing to life? And then we have all the mechanical stuff. We get people playing in position, the right people, the right management. You think about middle managers. Middle managers are in a terrible spot, really. The operating mechanics of how we interact as a team, taking instructions from on high and passing them down below, and then taking information from down below and passing it up on high. It's about orchestration. And aggregating information and getting spreadsheets and reports and putting all this stuff together. Are we as a team, or as we as an individual, easy to work with and easy to work for? Slowly but surely, that's getting boiled out. The processes, they don't drain people so people can actually do their jobs. They create a way of their society, a vibrant culture. And I talk about the ways that great organisations build great cultures. And there's bonding mechanisms and I talk about those. The power of stories. I talk about the behaviours and the communications that are so important. Management style is really important. It's how we operate. It's what we do, when we do it, how we do it. So that's the world of jail. We'll keep away from that. That's just, that's fraught with risk. There's lots of risk. Or the other way of looking at it. It's what we say, when we say it, how we say it. What an amazing place to apply our trade. And, you know, we, we can really use this. This is a tremendous asset for us. I love that attitude. Two ways of looking at exactly the same situation. It doesn't matter what I get confronted with. Yeah. I'm going to do something yeah. that's really good. Outperformance is no fluke. What I've seen in practice is that many of the successful teams put these things in place. They don't get everything right. You messed up my example. Sorry. <laughs> and they give it time. They give it time for the team to bond. The Beatles got great in a little club in Liverpool in Matthew Street called The Cavern. Then they became renowned in Liverpool. It's so good, so bonded as a team, but also so good at their craft that now in Almaty, in, on the old Silk Road, in Kazakhstan. This place is Kazakhstan. There's a bench dedicated to the Beatles. I believe there's one in Mongolia. And then what happens amazingly is a sense of family kind of emerges and then uh, 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 luck emerges. And it's not really luck. They're just maximising the opportunities for happy coincidences. Guess what? The market changes. We've got to start again. There's a lot of talk of digital transformation. The market changes, the leadership moves on, or success starts to change the mindset of the leaders so they sort of forget what, what's made them successful. Get as broad a perspective as you can. Because there's so many experts, nobody actually knows what's going to happen. A monument uh, that, that sits in Pristina in Kosovo. As new things emerge, try them out. They redecorate this every 12 months. What's your prediction for how it will change? I think it'll be super slow. I think it'll just snails pay, snails pay, snails pay. I think all of this stuff does. We're going to have to get used to redecorating our businesses every 12 months. I think it's much more likely to be digital evolution, but it's inexorable. So, all in all, he helps individuals and businesses improve. He does it using keynotes, talks, masterclasses and one-on-one -on -one sounding boards for leaders, entrepreneurs, CFOs and sales professionals who are selling to business leaders. His work is underpinned by pragmatic models and frameworks such as PPMC leadership and others. Thank you. <laughs>
So after all that, if you do need a speaker... Okay! Okay! My contact details are on here somewhere. Bye-bye, bye-bye! Bye-bye! Zai Tien! Somewhere. Down here.